four D audio. Four D audio. ASMR. Oh, I should probably bring up the show sheet. Oh yeah. It might be kind of important. It might be. We're always really prepared here on the Fake Racers podcast, aren't we? Mm-mm. Yep. Davey. Top notch preparation. Davey, have I do... you guys ever had a No 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 I got it this week. I got it this week. I got it this week. Okay. Um I got a question for you though, Davey. Do you what? consider yourself a Jimmy Johnson fan? Yes. Is that fandom official? Yep. Do you have one of these? Do you have one of these? Where is it? It's buried in my old room. No, I need you to find like it. I, I need it for next uh. week so you can prove that you're an official Jimmy Johnson fan. Because without one of these... Okay, I'll get it to you next week. I'll I'll have to get, I, I will have it here. I gotta get my official Dale Jr. fan one from 2002. Mm. Yeah. I, I have all three DEI drivers. Ones of those from like diecast that I got as a kid. Mm. It's a good time. Would that you was... call yourself a Brad Keselowski fan? I, I don't have an official badge, but they never made one, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have the official Brad Keselowski cup of... <laughs> now, mine has a handle on it, so I guess it's not official. That's cool. Hey, I'm going to grab the handle. doesn't have a handle i still never got an email back from them and it's it is the most frustrating I still thing a, i still have a cup i know i understand i it's just most... love that you emailed them and they were basically like damn bro that sucks good luck with that man that's gnarly <laughs> i uh so sorry if anyone has uh, good ideas for where we can do our merch through that isn't red bubble because red bubble would be the next one that i know of that i that we could do and it would be semi easy and there's good options for wide variety of merch and we need print on demand is the big thing because i'm not housing 600 jtn t-shirts yeah don't know why you wouldn't i have a question for you joe yeah did you ever think about what you might be the best at in the world ah shoot <clears throat> that's right it was homework the... yeah there was homework and i even gave you an extra week for it i know i know huh would you say you're the best in the world at supplying people with snarky comments that they didn't ask for? I- I'm probably the best in the world with putting up with your BS. <laughs> oh, they, they did it! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I um, I was just wondering. Okay. If you found out anything, if you thought yeah. of anything. Clearly you didn't, because you no, don't that care one about anything. Right there, so. oh, there you go. There you go. That's pretty good. Anyway. I did a pretty good I did pretty good funny on the JTN Twitter, apparently, so that's cool. That was Joe's, pretty good. Joe's so proud of it. I am so proud he of it. He should be. He should yeah, be. Should I'm be. proud of actually good. getting interactions good. for for the brand. Because holy it was, cool. it, was, it was good and funny. It was a good funny. Shout out to people that uh, don't understand things and like to just scream into the abyss. Well, yeah, I do expect it, but yeah, yeah. But it's always funny when you when you see it. Um. But anyways, this is a fake racers podcast. I'm Joe. It that's that's Davy. That's I'm Matthew. Matthew. Um. We're so glad you're joining us this week. Uh, the energy has been brought. Brought. It's and here, we're it's here to stay. It's here to stay. stay. Um, but obviously um, NAS- NASCAR was at Road America. We didn't talk about F1 last week, but uh, there's reasons to talk about it this week. Uh, IndyCar was at Mid-Ohio. Ooh, spicy SRX. And then more racing this weekend. So let's uh, let's dive right into it. NASCAR at Road America. That's what everyone's here to listen to us talk about. Let's start with the Cup yeah. Series because I think this one might be a little bit shorter because, hey, the race was actually shorter um, than the Xfinity Series race. No natural cautions as Tyler Reddick took home his first career victory. We're three for three on road courses with first time winners. Um, out duels Chase Elliott late in the going. Thoughts, opinions. I don't. That was a long time coming. Yeah. Very long time coming. Very yeah. happy for Tyler Reddick. Nothing really to say other than good for that team to clinch their berth into the playoffs. <laughs> There's a lot. There's uh so I, <laughs> I know I know when and you're in um thirteen winners so far. 
Yeah. Austin Cindric is shaking in his boots. Chase Briscoe as well. Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez is actually the lowest out of the guys that have only won one That's race. That's wild. Yeah. That's um, wild considering how he's run this season. Yep. So, so you have that. Uh, Kevin Harvick is now the first guy out. Al Marola is out. I don't know if either of them have race winning speed consistently, but yeah, obviously it was we saw last summer Al Marola taking one out of nowhere. Yeah. Um despite yeah. being like twenty sixth in points or whatever it was. Um but right now the last three in, of course, are Ryan Blaney, who won the all star race. Of course that doesn't count. Martin Truex Jr., who I don't know if he has race winning speed either, but He's still Martin Truex Jr. and Christopher Bell, who has had race winning speed, but continues to not know how to execute in the late stages of races, which is a it, yeah. it's a thing with a lot of these young drivers, right? Even the ones that have won this year. So I ask you, even if you get one win, do you feel safe right now? Depends especially, on where you are. I mean, especially with two more road courses, you have the Indy road course. You have Watkins Glen, mm. which we have seen yeah. have turned into more clusters than they have been in the past. You have two super speedways left with Atlanta this weekend. <coughs> and then Daytona, of course, regular season finale. Oh, I, did, I forgot about Atlanta. Yeah. <sighs> Michigan. That, cha- that changes my answer, genuinely. Michigan could um. be wild uh, with the way California was. Uh, Guys like Austin Dillon, Eric Jones ran really, really well there. Those are two guys that probably have had enough pace to win a race if they can execute throughout the throughout the event. Michael McDowell, yeah. Chris mm-hmm. Busher can't throw Brad Keselowski out of the mix just because of the super speedways, and we know he's good there. Um, yeah. Am I forgetting anyone? I think no, I kind of named I'm... all the Ricky Stenhouse. I mean, <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse could do it. Stenha- I was gonna say Stenhouse and Bush are both good plate track drivers. So, well, and Bush road finished course. second at Sonoma, yeah, and sixth. So. God, this past dude, weekend. dude, the end the of the season. <clears throat> I totally forgot about Atlanta being the way it is now, and obviously, I knew about Daytona coming up, and the road courses. I feel like I don't want to say it's fluky that we've gotten first time winners, but it's definitely like. I don't know if I don't know if that's something that we can look forward to. So I think it's just something that's happened this year. Yeah, I was gonna say, out of the three of them, Ross winning at Coda, I think is the <clears throat> is the outlier. Mm-hmm. Um, not that he's like a terrible road course racer or anything, but Daniel Suarez road courses have been his better tracks. Tyler Reddick mm-hmm. has been in the top five on the road courses in his two years in the Cup Series. Yep. Um, more often than not, it feels like. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't, those two. So, if you wanted to say that one was a fluke, it'd probably look to Chastain at Coda, especially with the way that race ended, right? Um, yeah. So, but it, even then, like, Chastain finished top five this week. I'm pretty sure he was top five at Sonoma as well. Yeah. But, but to date, yeah. like, the, at those the time, races to date, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's why you look at Busher and McDowell for those two because they've been mm. both solidly inside the top five, top Always ten. Always threats. Yep. Oh yeah. Always threats. Um, no, I don't think I. I, th- I think you Damn. get to sixteen this year. I <laughs> do. We might. Yeah. There's eight races I, left. I think, <clears throat> I think you count whether it happens or not. If you are a team that is not in the playoffs right now, you are counting on there being sixteen winners. You have to. You have to play your cards in a way that. Like you, that's already happened. I feel like that's yeah. the only way to be truly safe is if you play your cards. Is if there are sixteen winners and you need to go and like truly, truly execute and get the most out of every weekend that you can because it's just it's just too unpredictable. It's too wild. I mean, the last race of the season is Daytona. I mean, yeah. We could go into that race so, with sixteen different winners no and more. then Eric Almarola <laughs> not having a win up to date gets one and he gets a, in ahead of an Austin Cindric or a Chase Briscoe or a Daniel Suarez. So, that or even comes yeah. down to like who's going to get to two first. So. Well, that's what it's going to be like. Um, th- <laughs> sure. No, your camera just turned into a gif. <laughs> <laughs> not on my oh end. my god! <laughs> um, <laughs> not showing up on the on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's <This is> amazing. <laughs> I'm getting. Uh, I'm get. I'm, I'm. I'm recording real quick. It's really funny. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is it back to normal? Are we are we done? No, yeah. it's not. It's you not can hear me though, normal. okay, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Right, I can see y'all. You okay. just look really funny. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> what we like to hear. Um, 
so yeah <laughs> you got all that stuff going and uh it, like you said like you were trying to say there before funny um <laughs> two wins two wins is the only way you're locked in so you look at william byron chase elliott um denny hamlin it was actually he's the lowest guy in points that has a win uh, but he's got two of them so it doesn't matter yeah, I gotta see. I keep forgetting Denny is so low in points. But I, I, I bring that up um, because there were some questionable stage racing calls throughout the race. Um, you had Cindric and Briscoe staying out in the first stage to get points. And then, yeah, uh, and then in the second stage, I think... pretty much never recovered. Yeah, and Blaney stayed out in the second stage and ended up getting back to where he was, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Chase Elliott not going for the stage wins... Made sense, but also not really. His playoff, yeah. I feel like playoff points are a little more valuable since no one's kind of run away with it this year. Yeah. I, uh, I was, I didn't really, like, I, it's like you said, right? Like, I understood what the game plan was, but it's like, just take the points and, and run, man. Oh, your camera's back, by the way. But yeah, just take the points and run, in my opinion. Like I said, you gotta be playing, like, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many there's there's so many moving parts right now that every team probably has a t totally different game plan. Every team is looking at the end of the season differently. It's just wacky. That probably is the reason why we saw some of those weird calls. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like um since you mentioned Chase Elliott, when you're in his position where you've got those two ends and you're basically locked in, you can kind of just do whatever be like okay we got race winning speed let's just try to maximize points even if it doesn't give us that track position which i get which i get and you know. and don't forget winning the regular season also gets you 15 playoff points chase currently leads the points yeah um mm -hmm. so kind of losing out on some of those although the guys that are around him also did the same thing um it's just kind of that messy situation that stage yellows give us on the road courses and I don't know. We're playing armchair quarterback here, but yeah, who cares? That's, That's what, what we're supposed here. to do. That's the exactly. point. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. I That's know more than point. you, Alan Gustafson, just like every other Chase Elliott fan on Twitter. Correct. <laughs> um, other news though with Reddick, uh, RCR re-upped them for next year. Uh, accepted the extension or what? I don't whatever the terminology <laughs> is. Uh, he had a clause yeah. in there, but. Uh, Reddick will be a free agent after next year. He will be a hot commodity, most likely, especially if uh, Harvick's last year is next year and Trix's last year is next year. That's uh, a good point. Yeah. So uh, if RCR is serious, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna probably try to get him long term deal signed. And the twenty twenty three silly season already hotting up. Already heating up. <laughs> I'm going to just get in before the whole like Tyler Reddick to replace Alex Bowman at Hendrick. So that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. I mean, the discussion is not the thing that you said, but the discussion <laughs> that's Bowman 100 signed through going like 25, happen. I thought. Yeah. William Byron. Oh, Hendrick's have worst driver is like 12th. Oh, they're so crap. They need to replace Byron, him. Byron's going to have a bad season or something. It's going to be William Byron. Out. Meanwhile, mm. meanwhile, William Byron is free. Has been in an absolute free fall <laughs> over the last two he months. He really has. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, he hasn't had. What, what's it been his best finish like the last like two months? Like sixteenth. I'm gonna look. Not good. They they are happy they to got, be going they got to that Atlanta. second win. Yeah. Yeah. They got that second win and then they just like fell off the face of the planet. You know, maybe that gives uh, some merit serious. to the to the fact that teams um you know kind of test stuff right. out once they're locked in. But oh my god. I, just now I didn't realize it was this bad. Uh, yeah. So he won Martin's. So he won Martin's. So yeah, this little stretch here. He wins Atlanta, 12th at Coda, 3rd at Richmond, wins at Martinsville. All right. 18th at Bristol, 15th Talladega, 22nd Dover, 13th Darlington, 15th Kansas. Or sorry, 16th Kansas, 32nd at Charlotte, 19th at Gateway, 9th at Sonoma, 35th at Nashville, 16th at Road America. So the only, th there's a couple finishes that are. You know, not uh, of the performance like Darlington. Yeah. Right. But um, Charlotte as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's still it's it's funny. It's still not good. Nashville, Nashville was a mechanical issue, too. But still, like those things pile up after a while. And then it's like they've had a top 10 since they won Martinsville. Jeez. I mean, it, 
goes back to what you said. Like even about like Christopher Bell, like you still need to execute. Yeah. So yeah, execute. As, as a team, as a driver, there needs to be execution. And my my lord, I didn't know it was that bad either. Yeah. yeah. Shout out, uh, shout out, JGR for swapping Christopher Bell's Ooh. pit crew members with some of Bubba's pit crew members for some I reason. I don't, yeah. I don't get it, man. I just, I, I understand from like a, I yes, let's help the twenty three team get a little bit better on pit road, but also C Bell, I, I believe. I believe C Bell's crew is probably the worst out of the four Gibbs ones. I could be wrong there. Um, <laughs> not to mention, he's like he's on he the is chase the bubble now. Driver, yeah, yeah. And it so they're like, "Hey, sense. so you're racing for your life right now. How about we take away your pit crew and give you the worst pit crew in?" Well, no, no. So they didn't. So that's the thing. They didn't. <laughs> it's not the whole crew, but yeah. And and sometimes that's just a big chemistry thing, right? Yeah. It's it's not necessarily about like oh all these guys are awful. It's just sometimes you got to be in the right situation. You need to be with the right people around you. So hopefully those two crews get better. That's the idea. That's that's why you don't just straight up swap them. Um <laughs> cuz that's never a good look. So yeah, I see Hendrick at what was it? Was it Texas where they just swapped 20, Jimmy 20 and Jeff's crew? Mid race. Yeah. Mid race. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff was um, what, Jeff was out of the race, right? Yeah, that was the race he fought Jeff Burton on the backstretch. So. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. What an um, event. I, I that think was that was before race. that, too. I don't even know if Jeff was out of the race yet. I think they just called that audible because Jimmy's crew was struggling really bad. Jimmy's crew and was Jeff wasn't doing terribly. Yeah, and that. Jeff was out of the, the championship hunt by that point. So I think that's true because Jeff wasn't wrecked out when they switched. Okay. Yeah. They made that call mid-race while both cars were still on track. Oof, even worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with with Bell is it's like it it this almost looks like a writing on the wall like they're kind of like all right, you need to get it together or Ty Gibbs coming through the totem pole there. Yeah. It, it's it was obvious um, when he took over for Eric Jones that he was the lowest guy on the a, totem pole. It's a glaring it's, vote of no confidence. It's just weird though cuz it's like we've seen that it takes cup drivers about 100 races to start winning, you know? Like, I think it's Byron, Larson, and Elliott all won in their 99th career start, I think is what it was. Like, it takes, like, three seasons to actually become a good cup driver. And we're, like, mid-season three, and they're already, like, casting him off, it looks like. Yep. It's weird. And he won well ahead of those marks, and... Yeah. <laughs> hasn't been as competitive as those other three, or Byron not, but Larson and Chase were definitely competitive before they won. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But like, if you if you again, I always I know this is this is the fan in me. But if you look at what happened to Eric Jones with that twenty car, heck, you look at what happened to Matt Kenseth with that twenty car. Mm -hmm. Um, that is like the kiss of death to be in that car. Do you're you not going to get further back to Logano. Yeah. Um, but Kenseth had stability, is the thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but Kenseth was not at a point where his his career was over. He still had some to give. It felt like right. Um, oh yeah, he was still. He won. He probably he, he would have made the final race. four. <laughs> he won yeah. a race. Um, he was still like a top ten driver when they fired him. So so weird. And then you and then you look at Eric Jones's time there. You know they never the team wasn't performing, but then they never switched anything around. They just kind of left him with the same group. Yeah. And then now they're like you said with Bell, it's kind of like a vote of no confidence. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, because just don't know the intricacies of everything, right? We don't see these yeah. pit crews, but it's it's definitely not a good, not a good look on him, especially because, you know, hasn't won a race this year, has had speed, but like we talked about, just hasn't been able to close out events. Yeah, especially coming off the heels of an Xfinity race, where Ty Gibbs was able to close the deal. Um, shout out to Ty Gibbs and Noah Gregson because, you know, they never both do something dumb in a race. Yeah, <laughs> it's one or the other. Really appreciate. It's like that. they like rock paper scissors before a race. They're like, all right, I'm doing something stupid this week. Um, but very impressive That's run by Gibbs oh to not yeah. uh, to not rough up Larson. Feel like maybe gains a little bit back. Don't know. I feel like that's a lot because Larson's a cup driver. He didn't rough him up, but if he was another just another Xfinity driver, he probably would have yeah roughed him up. He, get around. Got him. Kyle Mirror driving at the end of that race, so. But uh, good on good on Ty Gibbs winning his third race of the year. Uh, felt like he was kind of not drifting out of the championship conversation, but kind of getting put back in with it with the group. 
Hmm. Now, yeah. you know, feels like if he can have another good couple weeks, they're back in Atlanta where he won, maybe can gap himself from the rest of the field again. But um, obviously the big incident here to talk about is what uh, Noah Gregson did and overreacting coming off of turn number three uh, down that straightaway into the kink with Sage Karam. Let's set you up for it. Sage got into Noah a little bit going into, or no, Noah did Noah get into Sage first going into one. Sage got back into Noah going into three coming off of three. Noah just turned right. That's yeah. yeah. More or less. Um, I, I don't, I just, I find it ironic that the last couple of weeks we were talking about how Noah's kind of turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Found that pretty yeah. ironic. Um, yeah. I liken it to the times that I've defended uh, people like Matt DiBenedetto and Brett Moffat, and then they immediately make me look like an ass. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's a... And it, it's like... I don't know, man. Just poor optics, poor situational like aware like you want to get to the guy you want to hit the guy sure if you want to if you want to rate rear him eh, maybe don't do that but like it's now, at a road course it's not fast and, eh, what go ahead what is it what's so funny i'd it, love to know it's the temper it's the temper yeah. like look yeah. at, look, we, we talked about it with ty gibbs at martinsville how how are you in the xfinity series and you have mm -hmm. that short of a temper yeah, it's ridiculous. It, I mean, he did. Well, someone say the days of thunder quote. But he he rubbed you, and that's racing or whatever. Um, you know he. Nobody I, tell them that days of thunder is a fictional movie. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> <laughs> not a real thing. But <laughs> but the point being, yeah. The the reaction was so far and away extreme compared to the to what at like what was done to onto him and what makes mm -hmm. it even weirder is like how cool headed he was with ty gibbs at portland and with jeb burton at charlotte and then like both of those times where he like but people trying to screw with him and he just kept a, co a cool head and it's like so what was it that sage Karam did that made you snap like that and there, and that, there's there could be a lot of reasons for that too, because like if you, if you look day. at it, like if you're not, yeah, wasn't having a good day. If you're not part of like the NASCAR fraternity, which I would venture to say that Sage Karam is not, you don't really get treated with a lot of respect. Like that's like a, it's like a cop out throwaway answer, but like that really is like a thing. Like, you know, when when people from another series come over to NASCAR, like they're coming from their fraternity to another fraternity of drivers, and it's if you're not in that group, you get treated a little bit differently. Yeah, and um, albeit doesn't justify the hair trigger anger that Noah Gregson had, but you know, it's just, I, I agree with you, Joe. It's, it's, you can't, you can't be a professional and have a hair trigger. You can't be a professional. And I don't think you can write weird guy at all, but especially not at a part of the track where, you know, the track could get blocked up. It could cause the accident that it did. If you just yeah. right rear him into the grass, like that's, that's still really S H I T T Y E. Cause I don't want to cuss and make Joe put, blur something out or whatever but like it's still not good but right. at least like he only took out one car he did it in a straightaway with barriers right next to the track and it blocked the track out. like again it's not, like where like where are your optics like what are you thinking is going to happen wrecked here? himself like, what are you doing wrecked himself especially that's <laughs> the yeah. dumbest thing it was just dumb it was just stupid it was like it not only was it needless it was like actually dumb yeah it dangerous was... too brandon brown looked like he was hurt after it Oh, he got he got kicked in the groin. He said, "Yeah, he later said what it was, but still, it's not a good look <laughs> when you intentionally wreck somebody and junk half a dozen cars, and yeah. then one of the guys gets out and is keeled over in pain. I don't know had how nothing to do with it. Like, are you not embarrassed? Like, are you not embarrassed? So I would be embarrassed. I, his post race interview. I was listening to the radio yesterday, and Larry McReynolds or Alan Cavant, whoever was on the radio talking, uh, we'll say Larry Mack because we give him a lot of respect, a lot, right?" Um, compared to anyone else, and was saying that Noah probably didn't see a replay. And to that, I say he drove by where the incident was, and there were four parked cars there, and three ambulances, and a bunch of medical workers. Like, I, I don't, yeah. that's not an excuse anymore. Um, you're aware of your surroundings behind the wheel, and you can say that a race car driver has to block that out. 
we know they can't because we see stuff like this happen. They can't block out yep. the outside noise. We know that. Um, no one can. I, but I lo- I loved. I don't remember if it was Jeff Burton or Steve Letarte what they said about it after no. Noah's interview. But whereas something along the lines of how it's like you want to be a champion, then you got to act like it. Yeah. Like that. But just <laughs> just ridiculous. So immature. Shout out the, to them trying it's to say Noah made a split. mistake when that incident <laughs> first happened, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was some bottom split level garbage. <laughs> and it's and I was saying something like this in our discord. I want to preface this, but I'm I'm not trying to say that junior motorsports should fire no Gregson. I'm not coming after somebody's job, but like. Like, what is it going to take? Because at what point are Junior and Kelly going to get sick of playing PR for him? When he's not winning because races. Yeah, but it was like Kelly put out one of her scheduled tweets after Noah's, you know, bi-monthly dumbass move where it's like, we're going to talk about this. And it's like, you've said this like half a dozen times. Has um, I, got a, I got a question <laughs> for you. What has Joe Gibbs Racing done about Kyle Busch? Yeah. That's true, too. I mean, like Gibbs for that matter. Or, well, yeah. but they're not going to do anything about Ty because he's got Gibbs in his name. That they're not going to. They can't do anything Still. to him. Still, yeah. No, I, I know yeah, it's it's because he's a good, he's a talented race car driver. He doesn't need to drive like this though, which is the stupid thing about it. And it's like I've been vocal on the show that I think he's overrated, but over the last year and a half, he's like genuinely turned into this driver that I see people talk about him or that how he is. And it's like act like it you don't need to drive like this it, it just pisses me off dude it really you don't pisses need me to, off yeah you don't need to run into a, a car that's usually running anywhere from 15th to 25th the potential, yeah, that, the, go ahead, sorry. i was gonna say that and the fact that you junked both of tommy joe's cars you know my or jordan anderson's car brandon brown's car these are all like owner driver teams low budget teams and you just destroyed all their equipment because you're throwing a temper tantrum like it's just absurd yeah, and it, and like you guys are saying, like to that, point, like you, the the potential is there. The all the ingredients are there for No Graxon to be, I don't want to say a superstar, but like a name. And he just yeah. takes it and he just rubs it in the mud once every couple months, just like scrubs it into the ground, tries to dilute it as much as possible. It's just it's a shame, honestly. Yeah, it's it's honestly a shame. The shame. Um, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, we've talked about the Chicago Street Course. Um, people are going crazy because Road America asked, "Hey, do you want NASCAR back here next year?" Um, which is something a lot of tracks do. Actually, you'd be surprised. But uh, do we see a future for the Cup Series here? The crowd is good, but that's the problem. I- yeah, I don't think the I don't think the race was bad per se. It just wasn't like, you know, you're in a state now where like Jeff Gluck's weekly Twitter polls seem to matter like more to NASCAR than just about anything. So it's a shame that the race is looked at the way that it was, because when we got to yeah. see some of the battles in the race instead of Chase Elliott in front of the field, the racing was nuts. Mm-hmm. Like it was really yeah. good. And, you know, I can't really put too much blame on the broadcast team for that, at least not yet. If I knew maybe more, I could. Road America is also a four mile track. Hard to cover. Obviously, yeah, uh, obviously NBC should have the means to like overcome that. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but I like the benefit of the doubt there. It's hard to cover. And so it didn't display as good a race as it actually was, so... which is unfortunate because it's going to possibly affect the future of road america in the cup series yeah i do because you bring up a good point about covering such a large track and obviously a large field compared to like when mm-hmm. they cover indycar there or even when they cover imsa there where it's you know you kind of have four three whatever how many groups of players and then you have the rest of the cars mm-hmm. yeah. um i would say that there is a choice to cover the sport's most popular driver when he's leading because he is the sport's most popular driver, and you know people will pay to see that. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe if it's Tyler Reddick leading for as much 
there maybe you don't see as much of it um i i do though agree though it, it's it's hard to cover good on them because they did show a decent amount of racing i think the problem with this next gen car on the road courses is the brakes they're too good you know <laughs> the, the reason the reason road course racing was so good like it was with the next jet or with the gen 6 and back uh was because those cars were not made for these types of tracks right where these cars a little bit or a little more suited for it um doesn't mean the racing's bad i don't i don't think the road course racing has been awful like i, I see a lot of people trying to say i just think the drivers are really good and now that they have really good stuff you know yeah. they're not running each other over causing cautions because the brakes stop the car they talked about it going into turn five like a hundred times um with drivers being able to stop where in the past they either use the use the runoff going you know through the the cut through or going into the gravel trap so um yeah. But to your to your point, it, it's hard to cover there. Uh, it, it was good racing. It, the crowd is what the crowd concerns me. Um, because you gave this market a race, gave it to them for two years, they showed up. You can't you can't abandon them like that. That's yeah. how you lose fans. Yep. Um, you know that's how you you lost your fan bases in Rockingham. You lost your fan bases in North Wilkesboro. You. you because you left them, even though they were there. Um, and by all accounts, like the people that I know were at the race in Road America, everyone loved it. Everyone yeah, had a yeah. good time. Seems like a good fan experience, like genuinely. Yep. Everyone yeah. got free donuts on Sunday. I really? Saw. Or a I lot of people that. did from Quick Trip. So that's pretty that's good awesome. activation. Nice. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> I don't know if it was everyone. It was probably like first, you know. 300 cars or something, but still, free donuts. Still, free, free yeah. donuts, hell yeah. Go with your $60 parking pass, parking but you pass know. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So yeah, I, I, again, it, it would be like, you know, in two years if they take Gateway off, or... Um, I, I feel like if you get rid of a road course, you get rid of Coda. Ugh. Which is frustrating. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough one, too. But I feel like the crowd yeah. still wasn't that good this year. Mm. And I don't know if that was because the first time they went there, it was so it was at like it was, or something else. This, this sucks. Honestly, they have like a perfect amount of road courses, but yeah. it's not enough. We want to add one more. I was going to say, Texas might just not be a NASCAR state. Which is weird, but I don't think Texas Motor Speedway draws very big crowds either. Texas World. I mean, it's. I know it's out in the middle of nowhere, but they could never put fans in that place. Yeah. So. But Chicago yeah. will be. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I mean, it'll be an interesting experiment. Yeah. We'll see. I want to see it just to believe it. Oh yeah, I would. I have been wanting a, a stock car street course race for years. I feel like they make it like the Coliseum, where it's like a hey, we'll tell you if we want to do this later. Like, yeah, we'll do it this one year and then let's see how it goes instead of, you know, obviously, I think they've gotten away from that with those big, long contracts. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. We'll see. Uh, but we just spent a lot of time talking about NASCAR. So let's go into some other stuff. Uh, F1. Big news. The big thing. Wild race. That lap one incident Wild start. was unbelievable. Um, one of the, I think one of the few times I've ever seen a roll hoop just completely fail. Probably like the second yeah. time ever. Um, Thanks to the scary. Halo. Thank you, Halo, for protecting race very, car driver. Very scary. I, yeah. It was like it failed. Like it didn't just come out. Like this wasn't like Dan Weldon where like it got in the fence and it got like kind of ripped off. Like it collapsed. Yep. That's scary. Yep. Yeah, the terrible. only only time I've ever seen that happen was Pedro Dennis in '99, where if you've ever seen pictures of his car upside down, the roll hoop like collapsed as soon as the car landed, and he was surprisingly fine. But yeah, that was scary. Hey, that is not good. It's crazy. It's like I say a lot of times when stuff like this happens. Hey, you can only test it so much. Yep. Hey, Halo continues to prove though why it's literally a life saving invention. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah, Th yeah. Don't really know what else to say about it. Uh, awesome sportsmanship by George Russell. Um, 
<laughs> that was really cool to see. Freaking FIA, so, man. Yeah. <laughs> you stopped and got out of your car, therefore dead. Yeah. That's lame. Yeah. This is a great race, though. Unbelievable. Oh, race. yes. The last 10, the last like 10, 15 lap sequence was just bonkers. I've never seen Formula Formula One racing like that. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yep. Signs finally gets that first win. Literally, I think it was like two weeks ago. We were all saying that it's like, it's going to happen soon. So, yeah. Awesome to see for him. And yeah, like you mentioned, that that Perez, Leclerc, Hamilton battle at the end of the race was awesome. Oh, my. Oh, my God. (laughs) And Haas double points for the first time ever. So. Dude, should have got more points too, but Max was driving yeah. like a B word. Yeah, it's fine. Well, of course. Still cool. Still really cool. Still super happy for Haas. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so fun to like Haas again. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Yeah, I can't believe that's Oof. their first ever double points finish. But why can you not believe that? I figured <laughs> it would have happened. I mean, they were really good in 2018, so I figured they would have done it at least once then. Mm. So. But yeah, yeah. So and Schumacher's finally on the board. Yeah. yeah. Put together a good race. Even even with Max driving like he was, didn't put a foot wrong, did everything right, didn't make any contact, yeah. no incidents. Good race. Yeah. Always cool to see a new winner. Uh, uh so uh equally um equally chaotic and maybe a little <laughs> more Spicy. <laughs> Maybe a little more spicy. <laughs> yeah. IndyCar happened this weekend. That was fun. Somehow, that was a lot of fun. Somehow the worst state in the union put on a pretty good race, let me tell you. <laughs> um, he said in the union. I don't know. Mississippi exists. Hey, it, oh, they have this one, okay? <laughs> um, it's Scott, podium. I'll give you podium. Scott McLaughlin... <laughs> Wins for the second time this season. I think he's up to sixth or seventh in the points now. Um, Penske has now won six of the nine races. Nice. Led by, of course, Joseph Newgarden with three, Scotty with two, and uh, Will Power with the one. Mm. Um, although that's not the story coming out of this race. Uh, <laughs> which is unfortunate because uh, Scott did a great job holding off Alex Pillow, and I forget who was running third. I think it was Power was running third, but did a really good job yeah. holding those guys off in the late stages. But there was uh, drama with everyone's favorite American team, Andretti Autosport. <laughs> now, this is a team that's ready for Formula One, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone knows that that Iron Fist leadership of Michael Andretti is going to whip them into shape. Yeah. And it'll be good for Drive it to went, Survive, right? It went so well when Michael Andretti went F1 racing in 93. Surely it'll work this time. <laughs> Yeah, what a what a calamity, what a what a what a mess, dude. Like and, Rossi and, literally got his new contract and then was like, "I'm gonna start trying," and I don't really care who my teammates are anymore. <laughs> and then he gets Basically. asked about it after the race, and he's like, "Well, yeah, of course it matters that we're teammates right now." <laughs> I'm like, okay, buddy, it didn't seem that way. Gotta, gotta listen to uh, Off Track this week with Hinch and Rossi, because it might be good. Yeah. I don't know how you're a racing driver at Andretti and you don't want out. Because it's just not... A, it, has it ever been, like, a good environment? Like, has it ever been good? Has Andretti ever been I feel like... really good <laughs> since, like, 2013? Okay, yeah. Dario literally me. won back-to-back titles and then went to NASCAR just so he didn't have to drive at Andretti anymore. <laughs> <laughs> dude 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 like andretti is a mess yeah because like you have michael andretti pussy footing around the fucking garage area all day sorry joe it's okay but i'm just, just like, gonna leave it like, in there because it's, it's no, accurate he has no goddamn control over his drivers he has no control over his team they're spreading themselves themselves out to all these other racing series they don't even have effing indy car under control a mess. Also, a mess. Correction. It's honestly disgraceful. Dario didn't win back-to-back titles in Andretti. He only won one, but still. Point sustains. It's still yeah. funny. <laughs> he had a career best season that was like, all right, I'm going to go drive stock cars so I can get a contract. You can make more answer. money. Regardless. Is and and is, is, is Alexander Rossi being a little unprofessional? Perhaps. But that man uh, wanted out from that team. So To, to be fair to... <laughs> they've also wasted three years of his career. So Yeah, I was going to say, to be fair to Rossi, <laughs> it feels like once Colton Herter arrived... He kind of got, there w- he was gone. There was no Alexander Rossi. Yeah. 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 
Um, it was Colton Hurd's team. But the same thing with Ryan, like a Ryan Hunter Ray. Once Rossi showed up, Hunter Ray was gone. Yep. He was just kind of mm-hmm. wasting there in that DHL car because reasons. Yeah, and it's never seemed like it's never seemed like Grosjean and I'm gonna go back to like the fraternity of drivers, the fraternity of IndyCar drivers. It doesn't seem like they've ever really gotten like truly gotten along. Like they've like been friendly with each other. Roman Grosjean has been in the series. Everyone knows that it's a good thing, but no one yeah. knows how to utilize Roman Grosjean and like truly integrate him to the sport and use his star power. Like, and it's just. It's just a it's, bunch of cultures mixing at once, and yeah. no one's really happy about it. And the th- okay, so the thing with Grosjean, and this is why it's you can't do what you did what you do with Jimmy Johnson, right? No. He doesn't. I don't think Roman Grosjean really appear appeals to the U.S. motorsports market. No, I don't think he does. He's yeah. you know he's a F one driver. Unless you're like a drive to survive, yeah, like, fan. and even then. Yeah. Even then, I don't know how he, you know, he drove for Haas. Um, mm-hmm. So, an IndyCar, to their credit, has, in the last 20 years, 10 years, not 20, 10 years, has focused, hey, we are American open-wheel racing. That mm-hmm. is what we are. North American, even, you know, because of Canada and whatever. Right. <laughs> um, so, they can't really utilize him in the way that it would make sense to utilize him as an international superstar driver, you know, yeah. to the same way you, you like, you're not going to use willpower or Scott Dixon that way because they've made their names here. They didn't make yeah. them internationally. So, um, so to, to give, to not completely put that on Andretti, um, it's more so it's a D car is very North America centric. Yeah. yeah, and and to go even a little bit deeper than that, I don't want to keep hitting home on these groups of drivers things too much, but like the IndyCar paddock, like if you are if you are in IndyCar and you've been in the sport, like you like the level of trust you have for your with your competitors and the level of respect you have to have to race on the ovals that they do at the speeds mm-hmm. that they do is really high, and new guys don't like they don't they don't really get that yet. Yep. I would imagine Roman Grosjean doesn't quite get it yet. He's only been around for however long he's been around. Those guys, you know, it's something that started kind of like, I mean, it's, it's been around, but like, like a lot of drivers attribute like Greg Moore with like bringing all the drivers to dinner before big race weekends on ovals and stuff like that. And like bring everyone together because you need to have that level of trust and respect amongst each other when you're going that fast and is that dangerous. Mm-hmm. And if you're, if you're on the outside looking in, you don't really, you're not a part of it. It's kind of the same thing I was just talking about, you know, like Roman Grosjean. He's not a part of the group. He's not He's not welcome at the lunch table yet. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, Santino Ferrucci is another really good example of, of being that kind of outsider that nobody really trusted. So Yeah, no, no one. <laughs> no, I mean, obviously there are a lot of reasons for that, but no one really, none of the IndyCar paddock from, from memory like him at all. Yeah. So. Yale Jr. did, though, during that 1-500 broadcast. <laughs> It's kind of mean something. No, G- no G- doesn't know any better, unfortunately. When it comes to <laughs> love I the was, guy, but he just I didn't know it. any hey, better. He yeah. does a really good job, though, when they have him out there on that little pit box for the 500 being like, hey, I don't really know what it's like behind the wheel, but in my experience. <laughs> Junior on the Indy 500 broadcasts are great because he's just like a really excited kid. Yeah. He's like, yeah, man, this is yeah. awesome. And they're like, can you tell us what's going on? He's like, man, this is sick. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't, but I, I sure like well, we it. Hinch is up there. Why don't you ask him? Yeah. <laughs> um. Do you think? Uh, do you think Paul Tracy hates James Hinchcliffe? Oh, one hundred percent. I Hinch. No, I mean, they're both they're both Canadian. Maybe they're like they're probably like a little bit friendly. You know, I, th- yeah, I think he's connection. polite to Hinchcliffe, but he secretly doesn't like him because it, it's it's really hard to look at Hinchcliffe being on the IndyCar broadcast as not being a direct replacement because I mean, they're both very <laughs> replacement. I... Yeah, but I mean, like <laughs> they're both like huge personalities, uh, Canadian uh, semi. <laughs> I wouldn't say Paul Tracy. They're not failed IndyCar drivers, but IndyCar drivers who never really lived up to their potential. So and yeah. they're like, let's get the one who's a creep. In a Q and honor out of here, and we'll put Hinch in here because he's way cooler. <laughs> I did not think you'd go there. 
Um, what, would you rather would you rather me mention the feet thing or what? Yes, actually yes. <laughs> IndyCar isn't racing in Toronto this weekend. That's next weekend, I believe. So, um, mm. mm-hmm. it's uh, it was a great crowd. Wow, correct. Yes, next week. Wow, at Mid Ohio, um, which is oh, great man. to see, especially because the trucks are going there this weekend for some reason. Um, By the way, that that wasn't an opinion. That was just a statement of fact. So. Oh my goodness! I'm I just not didn't expect it. Either way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm bringing the spice. Energy, energy, energy. Um, <laughs> energy, yeah. So yeah, it, it's uh, Mid Ohio was really good. It was a really good race. Yeah. Uh, Andretti <laughs> needs to get their stuff figured out. They um, need to stop fielding like seven cars and just focus on getting their own ones to run well. Like every time I look through the Indy 500 like entry list every year, there's like eight cars that are all within Dreddy Autosport listed after. It's like just focus on your like three that you have. Yeah, Can't but even Marco. Get all those ones running well. What about Marco? Yeah, it's like it's like when mm. RCR used to have like twelve satellite cars, and it's like cool. Austin Dillon's running twentieth every week. Maybe focus on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, who do they have? They had the thirteen, it. both JTG it, cars. Uh, they had front row for a long time. They had, um, oh my god, what else? Finch. Levine for a long time. Do they have Finch's team? No. I think not. Finch got Hendrick hand me downs, is what they got. Okay. But they had like six satellite cars, and like none of their cars were cracking the top 20 every week. <laughs> oh my god. And that concludes our how to allocate your resources <laughs> section of yep. the Fake Racers podcast. I spoke to Paul Tracy because uh, he didn't suck at. SRX this past weekend, so that was good. Um, didn't yeah. tear up a bunch of equipment. Um, said he kissed and made up with Haley Deegan, which was weird. I don't know if anyone caught that. Uh, it's just par for the course at this point. It's just Paul Tracy things, man. He just says stuff. I mean, he's like, okay, I won't talk about her feet this time, but I, I'll say something different. That's inappropriate. Um, but it is a, it is a common expression, so I get benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But also, you know, I'm sure he said it with a creepy grin. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty good SRX race. Uh, a lot better than South Boston in terms of uh, there was actually an art to the passing. It wasn't mm, just yeah. move you out of the way and get out. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Newman and was it, it was was it Hunter Ray or was it Marco or Biffle or it was somebody I could I can't. I can't tell you. I don't remember. Ryan Newman wins. I think it was Hunter Ray. I think it was Hunter Ray. I think so. I, w- I was waiting for Alan Bestwick to say it's the Ryan and Ryan show. Oh, yeah. No, it was good. Marco's P2. Tracy okay, so it P2. was Marco. It was Marco. Yeah. That makes more sense because Hunter Ray has. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Willie T. Ribs was in the booth. That was a oh ride. My goodness. Could tell Alan Bestwick was, was not having a good time. <laughs> Viewership was down was... again this week. Um, Alan Bestwick was holding it together with glue was... and duct tape, and, and not like oh not having Lord. it like in terms of like it was bad, but like man, this is so different from having Connor Daly up here <laughs> the last two weeks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, it, was, wh- it was a lot Willie... of fun, but <laughs> Willie T. Ribs is made for pit road. <laughs> He's great at that. <laughs> Willie T. Ribs did, uh, needs that Michael Waltrip like yeah. pre race segment. That's that's perfect for him. You know, Willie yeah. Willie ten words per minute ribs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I like to see him. I, I like to see him doing stuff. I think that's really no. Nah, he good. was he was good. He was. Well, I like I like that guy. Um, He's awesome. Yeah. I thought it was better than who who did they have in the booth last year? They had Danica. They had Hinch, obviously, and then. It's someone else. Oh, who else was it? It couldn't have just been those two. It might have just been those two. Um, Maybe. but I know I, I wasn't a big fan of Danica in the booth. Um, uh, so that could yeah. just be me. Which, which we we've talked about. We, that we've before. talked about how she does better with the studio style stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Brian Newman won. Dario Frank Dario Franchitti did one race last year. Thank oh, you. that's right. Thank you. And he was good, if I recall. Dario oh, yeah. was actually Dario's really been, well spoken. He would be really good at that in general. He's been doing Formula E for I think the entire time that series has been around. I don't know if he's still in the booth, but he's been he was there for the first few years and he's really good at that. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that actually. I don't watch Formula E, so 
<laughs> yeah, but who does? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Celebrities. What do you mean, unfortunately? To show up. Yeah, that's still pretty solid racing. Unfortunately, no one weird. watches Formula E. Look at oh, me. Oh, the cars sound like RC cars, so I'm not going to watch. I'm Joe. All right. <laughs> I didn't I say, say that at all. The Formula, the uh, Formula E the experience, hell? especially at a race, is tailored for influencers. And um, yeah. of that, we are not. Yeah, the racing's good. We try. It's just like it's just like gimmicky, like crazy. So it kind of yeah, turns cause, off because they're not looking fans. for they're not looking for racing fans. Yeah, yeah. To put it to put it put it clearly, they're not, they're not looking for people like us to watch. Yeah, the so, first like three seasons of Formula E are insane. No, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know the racing is nuts. absolutely dumb, stupid. I've I've seen like highlights and stuff. I mean, it's it's yeah. stu- it's dumb, but it's it's cool. <laughs> Uh, and that was SRX. I was really happy that Ryan Newman won because, yeah, that was cool. It's cool to see his daughters like really right. happy for him too. You know, oh yeah, especially because he should probably be dead. But well, 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 you heard well, it here first, folks. Well, Joe wants the Ryan Newman dead. <laughs> That's what I heard. Um, I will say, well, before we move off this, since you since you mentioned that, when they showed the pictures of his car, you know, after the Daytona 500, when when that wreck first happened, the the rumor I had heard was that when he got hit, it Newman's a big dude. And so it, you know, they have the big headrest and, and it like apparently compressed down like over his shoulders. So they had to like cut the whole thing apart to get him out. And then when they showed the picture of the car, that is what happened. So it was kind of interesting to see a rumor that I'd heard from people in the garage get fully confirmed. Like, yep, this is what happened. So that car should be in the Hall of Fame one day. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I respect the fact that Newman has it. Uh, when he's ready, he absolutely, I absolutely believe it should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Shout out to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. You know, I don't think you'd see a cracked football helmet in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but let's put race cars where guys should have died in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. To quote Larry Mack, that is a testament to the safety of these race cars. <laughs> <laughs> got the cadence right uh, oh weekend preview God. F1 is uh, in Austria the Austrian always Grand a Prix. crazy one oh, yeah. always a dumb one always Love a the crazy one um, who, who, who you guys got I'm just gonna say uh, 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 give me Lando Norris I guess yeah well all those fans are gonna be there wearing and wearing orange and stuff for McLaren so yeah obviously <laughs> All I'm gonna, those, I, all those McLaren fans. I'm gonna take the bold take, and uh, those fans wearing orange. If and when Lando inevitably has a mechanical failure, they'll be like, "Oh, we're already wearing orange, which is the color racing color of the Dutch, and also this track is sponsored by Red Bull, so give me Max Verstappen." <laughs> Weird. That's a, yeah. a long shot. Crazy coincidence, <laughs> but pencil that one in. Give me Botas. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, I can see that. You got a you got a choir of ooh there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> uh-huh. Um SRX is at the Nashville Fairgrounds. I believe Chase Elliott is in this race again this year. Could be. Uh, I know there's I think he's doing two of them. I think this is one of them since Who cares? I just tune in and watch the stupid stuff. We've got Elio, uh Joseph Newgarden, mm. Tony Kanon, ooh and That's right. Cole Williams. Oh, so Chase isn't in is. this one. No. Oh. Chase is running uh, Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Yeah. Him well, and Blaney. Yeah, yeah, because they're going to have Bill and Dave Blaney are going to be running that too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Give me uh, give me Joseph Newgarden. Damn it. Jose. Home track race, baby. Uh, I'm going to take, is Greg Biffle running? Uh, give me Greg Biffle. Yeah, he's running the full season. Give me Greg Biffle. Um, Give me uh, Tony. No, I was gonna say Tony's just sitting right there, um, but you gotta save yeah. him for the dirt races, right? Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, trucks are at Mid Ohio for the first time. John Hunter, with Jack Carson Hosevar. <laughs> uh, Chandler Smith. Wait, no, sorry, I meant to say Zane Smith, not Chandler Smith. Nope, you said Chandler. <laughs> sorry. Right. Give me Chandler. one of them Smiths. And oh. Regan Smith's winning the truck race. Piss. Parker Klugerman. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. Uh, 
I don't even remember who you said, so okay. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We already made a mess out of this. Who did he say? Yeah. I mean, we haven't kept track. I think it's doesn't matter. Parker Kligerman, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it was a road course and you just didn't by default pick Parker. Like he's running the tide truck too. Shut up. I literally <laughs> saw it earlier. Oh, I literally you, saw you still didn't pick him. I forgot. Dude, I do stuff like that all the time where I'll see like a cool paint like one off paint scheme and it'll literally go like in one ear and out the other, and then I won't put two and two together and be like, oh, that's racing this week, probably. Anyway, uh, Parker Kligerman is who I said. Xfinity and Cup are at Atlanta. Who you got for Xfinity? Uh, Austin Hill. Show Tell you what, baby. Creed. We're gonna we're gonna let Matt Mill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt Mills, baby. DJ McLeod. And then the Cup Series. Yikes. Um, uh. Give me Bubba. It's a good one. He almost he almost won here earlier, so I'm gonna take mm. Brad because this is one of two weeks that I can take Brad this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can take him any week. It's just not gonna go well, probably. <laughs> um, it might still not go well, honestly. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Last time we were here, he got penalized a hundred points. So yeah. we're gonna do something a little wild, crazy, and wacky. Oh God. Justin Haley. Alright. He, he's only good at super speedways. That's all he's good at, right? That's that's all he's NASCAR's good at. NASCAR's best super speedway racer. <laughs> Who hates that? I want to I want to do the math though, see like what his win percentage on play tracks is. <laughs> it's not really as good as you probably think it good. is. Um No, it's really good. But I mean, it's still probably higher than anybody else in NASCAR. Uh, fair enough. It's really good. Um, so that concludes, because I haven't got anything left on our show sheet of Fake Racers Podcast this week. Remember, if you want to find out more from us here at JTN, JoJo Network, on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, also check out the main JTN channel here on YouTube, where we have all our live races. Got All-Star Racing Wednesday, Bomb Squad Thursday, USRL Saturday, Monday next week, then thir- and we're, then we're kind of back to normal for a couple of weeks, and then we get back to normal again. And just a lot of racing over on JTN, so go subscribe over there. Or subscribe here on JTN, too, if you like this content. I don't know why you do, but hey, here it is. Uh, Matthew, where can they find more from you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at msteelman51ski. Yeah. That's about, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of social media. <laughs> and Davey. I don't feel like it this week. All right. <laughs> All their links are down in the video. In All their links are down in the video description below, folks. As always, <laughs> cannot thank you enough for watching the Fake Racers podcast. Uh, we will see you guys next week after yet another loaded weekend of racing. So long and yeah, have fun. I don't know. I don't have a tagline. Any of you guys got a tagline? Oh wait, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>